Room. There are four types of room. What are they? Right? Phlegm room, dangling room, overflow room, poking room. Right? Tan yin, xuan yin, yi yin, and zhi yin. Right? So four types of uh, room mentioned. Right? Um, off the bat, I'm going to say that the, it's, it's not necessarily easy in clinic to accurately uh, name them when they appear, right? Sometimes, is it a poking room or is, should it be called a dangling room or should it be called a this or a that? That's not always as clear to me either. Right? Some are clear, some are not so clear. So I think that's not the most important thing. What, of course, the most important thing is identifying which formula you need to choose to fix it, right? That's, I think the main thing to focus on. But exactly what is it called when, it, that's hard. Same thing with the water things, like is it wind water, is it skin water? Uh, you know, that gets pretty confusing sometimes to know exactly when it is what. So as long as you know what formula to pick exactly at the right time, I think that's the most important thing. So who cares what we call it? Right. How are the four types of room different? Well, the master says, person was constitutionally strong but is now skinny with water moving between the intestines and dripping sound, it is phlegm room. So a person who used to be more built, now they're very skinny, kind of like emaciation, loss of weight, those kinds of things. And then they have kind of, the, you can kind of hear the, the, the liquids in their abdomen. But whether you provoke that during the abdominal diagnosis exam by kind of uh, tapping on the abdomen and, and kind of eliciting the water sound, or whether you actually hear it. For some people, you can actually hear the water sound, right? That's what we call a phlegm room. Often, that would mean that there's something wrong with the spleen, obviously, right? With the phlegm rooms, there's always going to be something wrong with the spleen. Because then, of course, what happens is then the spleen is unable to transport and transform. And then uh, it cannot... Tr it's the, the spleen is the earth that controls the water, right? That keeps the water from moving in places where it shouldn't be moving, from overflowing and stuff like that, right? So if the spleen is too weak, then uh, people can lose weight. And, of course, the water metabolism starts to fail. You can hear all these water sounds. And especially where you hear it is below the heart, right? In that kind of spleen, middle burner region, that's where you hear the water sound. So that's kind of um, the first definition. When after drinking, the water flows be below the ribs and there is coughing, spitting with pulling pain, it is dangling room. So you've got to have a room now that seems to be that there's water kind of under the ribs, right? kind of like midsection, subcostal, that kind of region. Now, what that practically means, I'm not really sure Like, if there truly is water that flows there, if there's water that gets out of your digestive system into the abdominal cavity, that I'm not per se uh, too clear about. Um, I mean, ascites definitely, you know, is not sitting in the digestive system. It's in the abdominal cavity. But I'm not really sure exactly what's going on here, whether that's a metaphor for something or not. In either case, it's called dangling uh, room. When after drinking water, it flows and goes to the extremities. One should sweat, but does not sweat. There's body ache with heaviness. It call it is called overflow room. So when water flows to the extremities, again. Does the water directly flow to the extremities? Also not. I mean, it goes through the digestive system and gets metabolized and so forth. But of course, water ends up in the extremities and it, you have moisture everywhere. So um, for the extremities to not get too heavy, the pores have to be open. When your pores are open, then the skin can breathe. When the skin can breathe, moisture can leave uh, the pores, right? And then it never accumulates, right? So if the pores are not open, then of course there's going to be a body ache and heaviness, like the extremities are going to weigh uh, heavily because of course there's too much moisture stuck in them, right? Um, they could maybe be a bit swollen even, potentially. So heavy limbs, right? You're not able to sweat, uh, body aches because the surface is closed, right? And then, of course, the emphasis on the limbs being heavy, that's what we call overflow room. So the water has flown into the extremities. And when there is cough with adverse flow uh, of lung chi, uh, of course, and leaning during breathing, when you have difficulty breathing, you have to lean forward, have breathing is laborious, uh, shortness of breath, right? You are unable to lie down, right? You, if you lie down, you feel really short of breath and you feel as if you're going to choke, right? Because uh, your lung functions are so weak. And of course, like I've demonstrated many times before, this is a, a bottle of water, right? There's, the air is on top, so the lungs are nice and clear. But you lay flat, 
the water hits the lungs, right? Because of the body being being uh, supine. So of course that's that's the basic mechanism. So as soon as you lay flat, any symptom that happens when you lay flat is most likely, I would say seven out of ten is going to be related to uh, water metabolism because of the positional change of the body and the water having, it's much more easy for the water to come up in the upper burner uh, if, if you're laying flat than, it, than when you're standing up, right, or sitting up. So then shortness of breath, inability to lay down, difficult breathing, coughing, right, adverse flow of lung chi, all of that. And the patient can even look swollen, right, maybe face is swollen, extremities a bit puffy or swollen, right, that's what we call a poking Room. So four types of uh, room here. A few uh, symptoms as far as when water is in, finds itself accumulated in different parts of the body, right? Then you can have certain uh, symptoms present, right? So when uh, water is at the heart, there is kind of a hardness under the heart. So kind of the epigastrum will have some type of glomus uh, sensation, right? There's going to be shortness of breath, of course, if the water is at the heart. I mean, it's not really at the heart. It's always under the heart, right? So then, of course, shortness of breath because the diaphragm is not going to be able to go down and take deep breaths. There's going to be aversion to water and no desire to drink. The aversion to water and no desire to drink, that's a purely mental because there's too much water in the body and it's at the heart. So that's the, the mental expression of that. Water is at the lung, of course, more saliva, more slime, and so forth, right? Because of the lung only having pathological liquids, the physiological moisture is not, uh, the, the moisture is not physiologically available, so there can be uh, thirst. When water is at the spleen, there is little chi, very shortness of breath, the body has very little chi, it's very weak, and heaviness of the body. Little chi and heaviness of the body means the body is tired, the extremities weigh heavily. You have a hard time lifting arms and legs because those are controlled by the spleen. When water is at the liver, there is poking fullness under the ribs and sneezing with pain because there's fullness under the ribs. When you sneeze, it hurts. Right? So there's pain under the ribs. There's a poking feeling subcostally. And then when water is at the kidneys, there are palpitations under the heart. Why? Because the water... Like I've explained in the past, the mechanism of the palpitations, the water heavily presses onto the abdominal aorta and causes the palpitations under the heart, right? Ca causes the palpitations all along the renmai, all the way up into the chest. So those are kind of five lines that talk about different places where there could be fluid accumulation and what their symptomatic presentations might be, right? A few more lines with a few different type of uh, things about room and the treatment of room, right? If there is a residing room under the heart, what kind of room are we talking about? He doesn't talk about what kind of room. Residing room is now not some type of, you know, different, like a fifth different type of room. No, it's just if there's room under the heart, if there's room that resides under the heart, then the back has a cold area the size of a hand. And that's that typical that we talked about in the past where the back shoe point, the heart back shoe point region, right? not only heart, but heart and lung back shoe point region, is going to feel generally cold. Why? Because the young is going to be suppressed by the presence of the water, right? Because if there's no, no, if there's water, it means that there's no young in that area. <coughs> Same thing as the line 30 something, 306 or so, so 303, I don't know what it is, uh, the Fuzutang line that talks about the cold on the back is the same mechanism. In residing room, there is pain under the ribs pulling into triopan, uh, stomach 12, right, which gets worse when coughing. Again, pain under the ribs, all the way kind of poking and pulling into um, the upper part of your lungs. Basically, triopan is where your lungs the upper part of the lungs here. So when there's fluids, because the lungs is an airbag, right? The fluids, they kind of push everything up. Shortness of breath, you have a hard time pushing that. If there's a lot of liquid, it's a lot harder to get your diaphragm to go down because it would, it's almost like taking a soccer ball and trying to push it underwater. It takes a lot of strength to put a, put a, push a ball underwater because, of course, it's filled with air, right? So it's very difficult to get the lungs to fill up with air if there's a lot of water in the body, right? So there's a lot of room. It's going to cause, first symptom is going to be shortness of breath. 
difficulty taking deep breaths, right? That's why a lot of asthmatic conditions, you treat them from the room perspective, right? When there is a residing room in the chest, the person has shortness of breath and is thirsty. There's pain in the joints of the four extremities. Those are all room conditions. Um, disease of phlegm on the diaphragm. There's fullness, panting, coughing, spitting, right? Um, uh, right, I mean, uh, spontaneous excretion of tears, I'm not really sure why. Uh, is it because you're coughing so hard that your eyes are tearing? I'm not really sure why you all of a sudden um, have tears in your eyes. I'm not sure. But, uh, you know, a lot of these symptoms, obviously, a, a lot of the room symptoms, doesn't matter whether it's in the chest or on the diaphragm, they have some type of respiratory change, right? Um, intense sh shaking, uh, shaking and intense twitching of body and eyes. We've seen that in the Shahanlun in lines of, like, for example, Lingui Jugantang in the line of Jin Wutang, where it talks about Jin Jin Yu Pi, Rou Run. Rou Run means the twitching of the flesh, right? The, like twitching of the flesh. Jin Jin Yu Pi means uh, shaking and tendency to fall over because you have a very poor balance. Your extremities weigh heavier, so it's like, you know, you have a hard time. You sway more, you have a hard time keeping your balance. Those are all room conditions. Those are all conditions of too much damp accumulated in the body. Um, remember I said it's like it's like it's palpitations of the of the muscles or palpitations of the extremities, right? If a person drinks a lot of water, there must be sudden panting and fullness. Like if you right now chuck a gallon of water nonstop, you will have fullness in the abdomen and you will have shortness of breath. There is no way you can take a deep breath after drinking that much water. That's impossible. When there is a little food intake, but lots of drinking, water will stagnate below the heart. And in severe cases, there will be palpitations. In mild cases, there will be shortness of breath. Same thing. That's an experiment you can do yourself. A lot of people do that. They try to lose weight. right? They try to lose weight. They don't eat meals. They just drink water so then they wouldn't feel the hunger. I mean, isn't that what a lot of dietitians tell their clients? I'm like, when you feel hungry, drink a glass of water. Uh, because then, you know, your stomach will be full and you won't feel hungry or something like that. Well, you keep doing that a lot, you know, you're going to suppress your young, obviously, right? And then you get, in mild cases, shortness of breath. In severe cases, you get so much water accumulated that it's going to, again, suppress the, uh, the press on the aorta and give you palpitations. Do you think this is juicy fat? Yeah, liquids, I think, yeah. Any type of liquids, yeah. I think it's less worse with water than it would be with a juice or something like that. Because, um, you know, if it's like some type of juice that I think they are energetically maybe more cooling than water, and then maybe they have a, a flavor maybe bitter or pungent, maybe dispersing or descending. So then maybe people get a lot of loose stool from that. Well, normally water itself might not give you loose stool per se. Yeah. And then one of the most important sentences of this whole chapter is that when there is the disease of phlegm room, one should use warm herbs to pacify, right? Um, this is one of those sentences that we all had to memorize uh, in China. It's a very, very important sentence. It's like one of those sentences that we already saw. Uh, what was it again? The... Uh, uh, when abdominal pain comes and goes, when abdominal fullness comes and goes, it is cold and it, it has to be warmed, right? Same thing. It's like one of those sentences that really tells you, you know, in these situations, although sometimes you might think otherwise, you still need to use warming herbs to dissolve it all, right? Good. Some formulas. Some formulas. For, the, the whole chapter is a little confusing and it's a lot of detail. I would think that... Um, you know, in summary, I would say there's f different types of room. However, they're mostly categorized by a few qualifying symptoms. So look at the four types and kind of look at the qualifying symptoms. Granted, I agree, the easy ones are overflow and phlegm room, and the weird ones are dangling and poking room, right? So dangling and poking, it's kind of like, well, you know, when do you call it dangling? When do you call it poking? I mean... Uh, in some situations, that's easy, but in room, that's not easy. And so, um, okay, 
Nobody got that joke. That's good. All right, so moving on. Um, <laughs> but then, you know, so aside from that, right, aside from that, like those are kind of harder to identify clearly. Oh, yeah, this is definitely, you just call it a room, right? And then understand which are the different formulas and then kind of what symptoms they treat and then go from there. And that'll be the most important thing anyway, the formula. Because it can be a little bit confusing. Second thing, however, is that the red, the red thread that runs through this whole thing is, of course, that um, room that's going to be either respiratory changes or uh, palpitations, right? That's always typical for water accumulations, respiratory changes and palpitations. So shortness of breath and then maybe palpitations under the heart, those kinds of things. For shortness of breath with mild room, it should be expelled through urination, right? The water is sitting in the middle burner. It shouldn't. The water should sit in the lower burner. The lower burner is perfectly equipped to deal with water. The middle burner, not so much. The upper burner, definitely not. I mean, that would be flying water, right? That would not be a good idea. So um, if it's in the middle burner, you have to pull it down into the lower burner, right? By strengthening the middle and opening the lower lingue jugantang governs. Standard formula. Here, of course, Zhang Nongjing shows us another equivalency where he says, Shen Qi Wan also governs, right? So what Lingue Jugantang does, Shen Qi Wan also does, right? Lingue Jugantang does it completely from functional perspective. Shen Qi Wan does it from a material perspective, right? So that's uh, very straightforward. So Lingue Jugantang is a phlegm room formula. Shen Qi Wan actually is also a phlegm room formula, right? Shen Qi Wan is not a phlegm transforming formula. That's, the goal is not to transform the phlegm. Phlegm room is a liquid that is stagnant, and it is because it is stagnant that it becomes kind of sticky and phlegmy. Right? So Shen Qi Wan enables the body, fuels the body, so that the body can move fluids around again. So once the fluids move, then the stickiness will also disappear. Right? So by virtue of kind of expelling it, getting rid of it, it can disappear. Right, so Lingua Jugantang, Shen Qi Wan, they do the same thing. Uh, in the Shanghan Nun, we saw a very uh, high degree of uh, correlation between Lingua Jugantang and Zhen Wu Tang. Right? They both treat lightheadedness when you get up too fast. They both treat twitching of the flesh and uh, poor balance, you know, like uh, shaking and those kinds of things. Right? So there's a uh, Lingua Jugantang and Zhen Wu Tang also have uh, inter-exchange ability. They also have a certain amount of equivalency. And then, of course, you know, you put two and two together, that, which means that Zhen Wutang, by virtue of the transition there, also has equivalency with Shen Qi Wan. And Zhen Wutang being kidneys unable to move water but purely functional. Shen Qi Wan uh, being kidneys unable to move water but purely material, right? Um... For phlegm room under the heart, there is poking fullness in chest and ribs. The water is trying to push upwards against the fire. Fire of the south is weak. Earth of the center is damp. And the water is pushing upwards, right? Uh, full, poking fullness in chest and ribs with dizzy vision, right? It's phlegm room. It's got fullness in the ribs. Or no, why don't you call it dangling room? I don't know, right? Um... I, I didn't design the, the, the semantics for this chapter, so I don't know. You know. But if to me, it looks a little bit similar as far as uh, presentation. But it's called Lingue <coughs> Jugantang. What is phlegm room truly? Phlegm room is a very sticky liquid. Phlegm room is a liquid because the thing is, phlegm, the word phlegm, has the fire radicals, right? Tan or phlegm, right? Tan has the fire radical, right? So that's, that's uh, kind of a weird thing because it says, well, if there's room, you have to use warm herbs. And then all of a sudden, this is the disease of fire over fire, and that's what we call phlegm, right? So what does that mean? I think, to, to me, this refers to the stickiness, right? It's because a liquid that is clear, a cold, is a liquid that is com perfectly clear like fresh water. Right, like mountain stream, like in the in the mountains, the water in the rivers, it's very clear. Right, a liquid that is a bit warmer, a bit more polluted, that's a liquid that's more turbid. Right, so phlegm room 
is a bit more of a turbid room. It's like a phlegm, like a sticky thing. So basically, the way I think about it, it's like you have water and you dissolve a bunch of sugar in it. Right? And if you have water and you dissolve a bunch of sugar in it, it's a little bit, it's a little bit stickier. You know, like if you were to take a shower with it, it'd be very uncomfortable. Um, you'd taste good, but it'd be very uncomfortable. And so it's sticky, it's gluey, it's, it's a little bit of turbidity. Though it could still be transparent. It doesn't mean it has to be colored water. It could still be transparent. Right? So, uh, lingue jugantang for cough, lingue jugantang with shortness for shortness of breath. Lingua Jugatang for dizziness, for fullness in the chest and in the ribs, all of those things. Right? For the disease of overflow room, well, what was overflow room? The water flows into the extremities, there's heaviness of the, of the body, there is body aches and um, um, inability to sweat, of course, because the pores are closed. You have to open the pores. Once the pores are open and the lungs are open, then the sweat, the sweat can excrete and then the excessive water can actually be eliminated. Whether the el elimination of the water happens outward through the pores or whether it happens through urination doesn't really matter. In my opinion, most of it still goes out through defecation and urination. It's not like that you're going to sweat all that moisture out. That's not necessarily the case, right? But it is the case that if the lungs are not open, the water can't descend. It's the pipette effect, right? So you have to open the lungs. You have to, i.e., promote a sweat so that you could urinate, right? Without, without opening the lungs and promoting a sweat, you couldn't urinate. Two formulas, Ta Qing Long Tang governs and Xiao Qing Long Tang also governs. Ta Qing Long Tang, skin is closed, Fluid is immobilized, but there's heat trapped inside the closed skin. Xiao Qi Long Tang, skin is closed, fluid is immobilized, but there is no heat trapped inside the closed skin. As a matter of fact, the skin is a little bit open in Xiao Qi Long Tang compared to Ta Qi Long Tang, where the skin is not open at all. Right? Because the skin is a little bit open in Xiao Qi Long Tang, that's why there is not so much heat. When under the heart there is poking room and the person suffers oppression and dizziness. Oppression and dizziness is this kind of muddled head. feels like your head is very heavy. You know, when you move it around, it feels like it's going to throw off the balance of your whole body. It's like you have a big head, right? Uh, it's heavy and filled up with water as if it were, right? So under the heart there's a poking room. There's a fullness of room under the heart or in the middle. And the person has this kind of dizziness and heavy sensation in the head. It is zhe xie tang, right? Zhe xie tang. Now, zhe xie tang and lingue jukan tang are difficult formulas to keep apart uh, clinically. They both treat dizziness. And they both treat dizziness due to water pushing up into the middle. One has guajer and one doesn't, right? Lingue jugantang has guajer in it. Zhe tang does not have guajer in it. Zhe tang is only baiju and zhe xie, right? Lingue jugantang is uh, guajer fooling baiju and gantao, right? So the difference is going to be somewhere in whether or not you need the guajer. That's the thing. Now, clinically, that's very difficult to understand and very difficult to know. I mean, any time a formula doesn't need, doesn't use guajer, to me, that's complicated, right? Uh, baiju and zhe xie, if you say, or no that only in an environment where yang is damaged and where there is not enough yang fluids can accumulate, right, then why is there no support for yang in this formula? Right. And, and I, I don't per se, I don't necessarily have the answer. I mean, there's a case study of Todo Yoshimas, 17th century uh, patriarch of the um, ancient formula or the ancient method school in Japan, right? Uh, brilliant uh, clinician. He has a case study where a patient comes in with dizziness and he writes them lingue jugantang and it doesn't work. They come back and the dizziness has, is unchanged. And then he writes a zhe tang and then it goes away. So if he also struggles with that, there's no shame. You know, there's no shame. It just, it's, it's, very, it's very difficult. Um, you would say then, well, that lingue jugantang must have somehow started after damage to the yang. While zhe xie tang is just the internal growing and accumulating of damp, 
without an external somehow damage to the young. If that's the case, well, that's a very plausible explanation. But what you're doing then is comparing Lingue Jugantang of the Shahanlun with Zhe Tang of the Jingwei. But what about the Lingue Jugantang of the Jingwei? And Jingwei is not externally contracted. That's why it's a little bit confusing. Right? I also don't have the answer. I can only you know, uh, suggest to you the question. I don't really have the answer. Uh, in any case, they're a little bit hard to keep apart. One thing that over, the, over time now we have learned is the way to keep them apart is that Lingue Jugantang, by virtue of having fooling, should have what in the abdomen? <coughs> Pulsations and palpitations, exactly. While Zhe Tang has no Guizhi, no fooling, there should be no pulsations and no palpitations. Right? They both will have a water splash under the heart. But there should be no pulsations or palpitations in Zhe Tang. And that's kind of the way that I now keep them apart. Like I had this patient who always had dizziness, chronically suffered dizziness, and then never had pulsations or palpitations in the abdomen, but always had a water splash. And I always treated her with Zhe Tang. Now it's this chronic inner ear problem that she has I don't know exactly you know that she forms these crystals in the inner ear and and so um, I don't dare to say that I've cured the problem mm -hmm. but over the years years literally years of working with formulas um, the problem has gotten milder and less uh, the, the flare-ups are less uh, often and less less common right but I don't dare to say that I've cured that problem right does it mean that with the, with the herbs that maybe there's less crystals being produced now? Maybe. Does it mean that the old crystals, some of them maybe might have dissolved? Maybe. I want to believe that. I don't know that. I mean, the thing with those crystals, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even think that there's imaging for that. I mean, there's only these kind of chair things, right? Those Epley maneuvers and those kinds of things that they do. But I don't think they do. Is there... Is there yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they measure it, like they look how your eyes track, right? They put you, these glasses on with cameras, and then uh, they put you in a certain position, and your eyes will track a certain way that you're not aware of because you're just staring in the darkness. And that they, they, from that, they know where in the ear, uh, what kind of place has crystals stuck and things like that. But I don't think there's like an actual imaging that they do on to see the crystals and how much and how, you know, I don't. I don't think so, yeah. So it'd be, it'd be cool to see if there was such a thing, whether after a few years of like some formulas, which truly for this patient was a few years, uh, whether some of those crystals have disappeared. Right? It's, it's, I have no idea. But symptoms were indeed better, so I would maybe dare to think that some of them have, have disappeared or <coughs> dissolved or something like that. Zhe Vomiting patients should normally be thirsty, and thirst is a good sign, right? Why? While you have some turbidity in the center, that's what makes you vomit. You vomit it out, the center is no more damp, now your body's like, okay, now I want to have some physiological moisture, I'm thirsty, right? So that would be a good thing. But now, there adversely is no thirst. Why? Because this is not your average type of vomiting. This is a poking room. And a poking room means that there is an active uh, a damp production in the body that is sitting under the heart. Right? It is the poking room that makes you damage, that makes you vomit, but it doesn't mean that therefore you vomit it out and the problem is gone. The poking room is not fixed just by vomiting. Vomiting is nothing but a symptom. Right? So there still is damp present, and that's why uh, you don't have thirst. Right? The problem is not solved. Right? So Shaobanjiatang governs. Right? Then you have to use Shaobanjiatang. Shaobanjiatang is a standard room formula. It is a poking room formula, uh, which means there's a dampness sitting uh, right along the midline, right under the heart. Right? And that's what causes the nausea and the vomiting. The thousand ducat says that here you use Shaban Cha Cha Tang, which is totally fine, because there's another line that will kind of uh, confirm that as well. What I do, Shaban Cha Tang, I kind of go, normally, Ban Cha goes with like a deep guan on the right, but I rarely see those. Normally I go with a ginger pulse, just with a go with a tight right swan, right? Uh, knowing when to do just Chao Ban Cha versus Chao Ban Cha Jia Fuling, I, I normally look then whether the pulse rolls up or not. If it rolls up, which means mobile water moving upwards, mm -hmm. right, onto Tai Yin, 
then I'll do the Shaban Cha Cha fooling. If there's no rolling up on the right, then I'll just do Shaban Cha. That's kind of how I gauge that. Oh, the next sentence is the same. Double happiness. <laughs> For sudden vomiting with glomus under the heart and water between the intestines, along with dizziness and palpitations, Xiaobancha Jia Fuling Tang governs. So Dan Dong Jing basically says that the fuling is going to then treat the uh, palpitations and the dizziness, right? Like I said, the mobile water pushing upwards, invading the heart, invading the head, right? So Xiaobancha Tang by itself with the vomiting, plus fooling if there also is dizziness or palpitations involved. First thirst, <coughs> then vomiting, is because water stagnates under the heart, and this belongs to room patients. Shabancha Jia Fuling Tang governs. Or no, isn't this contradictory with the previous sentence that says that uh, a person who has damp doesn't feel thirsty, right? Well, that means, of course, that it's damp and the water metabolism, uh, it's damp problem and therefore the body does not want to drink in more water. It's damp, I don't want more water, right? Here, the problem is not only just the damp, but it's an actual failure of the qi hua, the water metabolism of tayang, right? And when their water metabolism of tayang isn't working, it's one thing that you have damp in the center and you don't want to drink water, it's another thing that your water metabolism of the lower burner of Taiyang fails, and then no vapors are being produced of the stagnant liquids. And because of that, then they are thirsty. Because, of course, the water is not, no longer moistening the wood, and because of that, there's not enough moisture making it back up to the south. Remember how I said, how does the water end up in your salivary glands? How does the moisture end up in your salivary glands? It has to travel up through uh, the blood and has to come from the water element, right? So if the water element itself is impaired, you still use Shaoban Cha Jia Fuling Tang, right? So vomiting first, then thirst, that's a good thing. Vomiting first, no thirst, that's a bad thing, means that the, the problem isn't solved, Shaoban Cha Tang, right? First thirst, then vomiting, Shaoban Cha Jia Fuling Tang. It is a water in the lower burner problem and damp in the middle burner problem, leading to your vomiting and thirst. All right, that's like the third, the third scenario here. Now the question is, I know, would this patient then be thirsty after they vomited? Probably. I mean, it can go either way, right? I mean, if they are thirsty after vomiting, it could be a good thing because they've <laughs> emptied out. It could also be a problem because it's just a sign that their qi hua of their bladder still isn't fixed. Right? So you kind of, from that sentence alone, you kind of can't know. If a thin person has pulsations below the umbilicus, along with vomiting of saliva and slime, as well as vertigo, this is water and wuling san governs. Right? A lot of pulsations below the umbilicus Right? Vomiting of saliva and slime as well as vertigo. Now, why does he say a thin person? I mean, or no. How about a thick person? If they have pulsations below the umbilicus, would that also not be possible to be this wooling son? I, I don't know. I think so. I mean, why not? I mean, maybe he's referring here to previously saying that the person was originally strong, but now they've lost so much weight and there's water dripping between the intestines and you can hear the sound and water is not going where it's supposed to be going. Maybe that's what he's alluding to. I'm not really sure. Because I think, you know, I almost feel like if a, a, a thick person has um, pulsations below the umbilicus, it's even more severe because normally thin people, it's very easy to spot pulsations because they're so thin, Right. And, but heavyset people, it'd be a lot harder to spot the pulsations. I'm not really sure exactly what he's trying to teach us here. I mean, he's obviously trying to uh, convey something, but I haven't really gotten, uh, gotten his intention here. In any case, vomiting of saliva and slime, as well as vertigo, obviously means that the middle burner has damp and the lower burner has water. This is perfectly in line with the previous line, where Shabancha Jia Fuling Tang also, the lower burner has water, Water metabolism is impaired, and that's why there's no qi hua happening. 
the middle burner has damp, right? And that's why there's vomiting, right? So same thing here, but just way more severe. In the former Shaban Chaja Fuling Tang, there is more damp, less water. In the latter, Wuling San, there is more water, less damp, right? Wuling San is definitely a lot more uh, uh, um, uh, water than damp, right? Because it's a pure diuretic formula, right? So uh, pulsations, water. Uh, below the umbilicus, of course, in the north, which is the water. Vomiting of saliva and slime, that means the water has come up into the earth. Vertigo means the water is affecting the fire element, right? Wuling San governs, you have to send the water down. Wuling San is used for vomiting in many an occasion, right? Clinically, you see this often with uh, kidney failure patients. Now, I'm not going to say that you have to use Wuling San for kidney failure patients. However, Shaban Cha Jia Fuling Tang is a very good formula for people um, who have uh, uh, kidney failure or, you know, kidney cancer, with kidney failure, whatever, or prostate cancer leading to damage of the kidneys, whatever, because a lot of these patients, when they have the urine retention, they ultimately develop um, ascites and a lot of fluid retention in their body, which leads to nausea. They, ha they have a lot of nausea, and they have to, a lot of them, they take Tums or, or things like that, <coughs> phosphate binders, um, you know, because it just, uh, they get so much nausea and so much stomach problems. So then, Shaban Cha Jia Funing, it helps with the water, keeps the water down, but it harmonizes the center and it disperses the damp and dries, harmonizes the stomach so they're not as nauseous. That's a very good formula. Uh, many a time when I've used even just tonic formulas, just like, let's say, Senchi Wan for so, for a patient with, with kidney failure, but if they have uh, urine retention and they have uh, nausea because of that, right? Then often I've combined it with Shao Ban Cha, Jia Fu Ling Tang. Right? So Sin Chi Wan with high Ban Cha, high Sheng Jiang into the formula. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise the Sin Chi Wan itself is already kind of a damp mm -hmm. formula, right? It's a, it adds more, more Sheng Di kind of water into the body. So that sometimes is a bit tricky uh, for them to be able to digest it if they have a lot of impairment of the center. For cough with leaning for breathing, right? If you have a hard time breathing and you're coughing and you cannot lay down, Shao Qin Long Tang governs, right? So that's one thing. You can use Shao Qin Long Tang uh, if there is a cough and they have a hard time breathing and things like that. If after ingestion of Shao Qin Long Tang, there is abundant salivation with a dry mouth. So saliva is kind of, becomes kind of frothy, right? But your mouth actually is dry. Like frothy saliva does not make you feel quenched. Water can quench you, but like frothy damp is actually, it means that the moisture is physiologically not available. It's patholog pathologically stagnant, pathologically impaired, but physiologically not available. A deep chun pulse and a faint tri pulse. A deep chun pulse obviously means that the upper burner is suppressed and the young of the upper burner cannot show itself. With counterflow reversal of hands and feet and chi surging from the lower abdomen to the throat and esophagus. Uh, obstruction of hands and feet, a face that is flushing hot as if drunk. Uh, so let's explain this part first. Basically, he says that uh, this is a patient who's got all this damp, but then you've, and then you've given them Sha Chin Long Tang. But because of the Sha Chin Long Tang, it's very pungent, it's very effusing, right? It's Ma Huang Greater Combo. So it's going to pull the young out of the blood and it's going to make the young rush to the lungs to try and open the lungs, right? So then what happens now is that this young, this patient's blood was probably too weak, could not really anchor the young. The blood is too weak, that's why their cheer pulse is so faint. They couldn't really anchor the young. So then, of course, the young surges, right? When the young surges, right, the chi surges from the lower abdomen to the throat and esophagus, right? And there's obstruction of hands and feet, right? So this kind of hands and feet... Uh, it's, it's the same word as B, like a B syndrome, right? Whether it means pain in hands and feet or uh, difficulty of movement or loss of movement or, or, or stuckness, uh, something like that, right? And then all of the young rushes to the face, causing a flushing face uh, that looks red as if it is drunk, right? Of course, because all this young rushes up, then of course the water is going to flow down, 
right? And then consequently, there's a downward flowing into the groin and genital region, right? Leading to difficult urination. Hey, I know why, why is urination not easy? Well, because it's a room, it's still a room patient. Remember, it's still, it's still a room patient, right? And this damp is not clear and easy, right? So then urination is also uh, difficult. Of course, also, there's no yang in the lower burner now. Right. Remember when we talked about uh, in the Shahanan, like great jia fuzutang. Right. Lots of sweating. There is uh, um, pain in the extremities. Lots of sweating, as if pearls of water running from your pores. Right. But difficult urination. Why? Well, because of two reasons. Right. Like well, one thing is okay, fluids are ex ex uh, are exhausting outward. That's one way. But the other way is that there's no yang in the lower burner. So if you have no yang in your lower burner, your tayang has a hard time opening, right? Because all the yang was floating out. So here, all the yang is surging up, right? Occasionally, the recurrence of muddledness, this kind of heavy sensation in the head, this kind of pressure and heaviness in the head, right? So in short, patient had coughing difficult breathing, right, and had a hard time laying down because, of course, they have lots of moisture stuck in their body. So whenever they lay down, they have a difficulty, difficult time breathing, and they were given Xiao Qin Long Tang, right? Uh, in the previous lines, we talked about, um, where was it here? Shortness of breath with mild room, right, should be expelled through urination, lingua jugantang governs, right? So... I would say that normally when a person says to me, I have a hard time laying down, I'm going to give them some type of fooling formula. A Mahuan formula would not be my primary formula to think of. You know what I mean? Like I'd probably go with a lingua jugantang, a shen qi wan, a zhen wutang, something like that. Zhen wutang with the cough modification, something like that. But here this patient was given xiao qi long tang. Right? And because of that, their young just got yanked. The young got yanked. The young just got like yanked upwards, to, to rush into the lung, of course, now leading, causing a surging of yang. All the yang surges up and uh, rushes up. Redness in the face, dizziness, oppressed, heavy feeling in the head, right? If, as if all this heat is in your face, all this heat is in your head, right? Because of it all going to the head, all the yang rushing to the head, there's no yang in the extremities, right? All the yang is going up. Right? So the young leaves the extremities. So then the heaviness in the extremities and the obstructed feeling in the extremities occurs. And then, of course, because all the young goes up, all the yin collapses down. So all the yin falls into the lower burner. But because the, the yin falling into the lower burner, there's no young in the lower burner, <coughs> tayang can't open. Right? So the lower burner can't, can't expel the water. So that's the situation that we are now in. Then he says, you give them... Fuling Guizhi Wu Wei Gan Cao Tang. We now call that Gui Ling Wu Wei Gan Cao Tang. Gui Ling Wu Wei Gan Cao Tang. Fuling Guizhi Wu Wei Gan Cao Tang. Guizhi at 12. Guizhi at 12 is the standard dose for palpitations. Right? Cardiac palpitations. Guizhi at 12 is the standard dose for uh, young surging upwards. Right? Fuling at 12. Fuling at 12 is also the entry level dose for uh, for palpitations right think think uh, i don't know lingua jugantang pulsations under the heart or think uh, what other formula uh, for example bancha hopotang and so forth there's a lot of formulas with fooling at 12 so guija at 12 fooling at 12 right to kind of uh, strengthen the heart and send the water down and then wu weids it because this is still a patient who was coughing Right? Still, we we'll wager to strengthen the lung. Right? Guizhi to tonify the heart. Right? We we'll wager to tonify the lungs. Right? Fooling to send the water down, not let it come up. And Gantau to treat the surging qi to moderate the upward surge, to moderate the palpitations. Right? So those are the basic things that this formula is going to achieve. Then, after giving Guiling Wei Gantau Tang, the surging has been subdued, right? Because you've tonified the fire of the south. When there's no, the, when there's a, the fire of the south is strong, there's very little rebellion against the south, right? So then the south is strong. Now, the cough becomes the primary thing again. Adversely, again, there is coughing. The cough comes back because the cough was not really treated enough, right? So the cough comes back. 
Then he says, you still use Gui Ling Wei Gan Zha Tang. Don't go back to the Ma Huang formula. Still use Gui Ling Wei Gan Zha Tang. Minus the Gui Zhi. Why minus Gui Zhi? Because the surging has already settled. Right? right? Plus Gan Zhang and Xi Xin. Right? So Gui Ling Wu Wei Gan Zha Tang minus Gui Zhi plus Gan Zhang Xi Xin is what we now call Ling Gan Wu Wei Jiang Xin Tang. Right? So... Um, in the first sentence, it said, the well, second sentence, it said, give Fu Ling Gui Zhi Wu Wei Gan Cao Tang, right? That formula, in the sec third sentence, he calls that formula Gui Ling Wu Wei Gan Cao Tang. Gui Ling Wu Wei Gan Cao Tang, then uh, the Gui Zhi gets taken out, and Gan Zhang and Xi Xin are put in. Gan Zhang and Xi Xin are put in. So that's what we call um, Ling Gan Wu Wei Jiang Xin Tang. Right, Lingan Wei Jiang Xin Tang. Then the cough and fullness also have stopped. Cough and fullness also have stopped. Right, so that's a great thing. Right, surging has stopped. Cough and fullness has stopped. Right, but now he says after taking the form, there's a recurrence. Uh, the rec or, uh, there is thirst and the recurrence of surging qi. Here he says that it is because Xixin and Ganjiang are warm herbs. Right? They're pungent hot herbs. They're very dispersing. They fuel the wind. The wind is fueled. Again, things start to float again. He says, right? So after that, there must be consequent thirst. If the thirst stops, there is poking room. Poking room. So normally, after taking hot herbs, like if I, anybody in the room, if we give you a little bit of ganjang shishin decoction, right? After drinking it, like half hour after drinking, you're going to start getting thirsty. Why? Because they are hot herbs and they dry out the tayin. They dry out, warm up and dry out the lung and warm up and dry out the spleen. So you're going to start getting thirsty, right? So he says, you give him these things, right? Uh, the, the, the young floats again because, of course, these are pungent hot herbs and there is some thirst. But if the st thirst doesn't come or if the thirst stops, then actually that means that there still is some damp. Right? And then he says, um, there's poking room and the rule says there must be muddledness. Muddledness means that there's kind of like a woozy, kind of dizzy, kind of heaviness in the head. And when there is heaviness in the head, there is a tendency towards vomiting. Right? Because it's kind of like car sickness. Right? Car sickness. Primary herb for car sickness is, of course, ban sha. Right? Primary herb. Why? Because it's kind of damp in the center. And it's kind of the clear young can't rise to the head because the center is so damp. And then you kind of have this heavy sensation in the head, so your balance <laughs> is all disturbed, and your head spins, and because of the head spinning, that's why you have to vomit, right? So bansha mechanism. So then he says, uh, you have to add <laughs> bansha for, to stop the vomiting and to expel the room, that the water, the dam that still is in the center. Now I see the question arise in your mind, like Arno, what the fuck? Seriously, right? You're all like looking at me like, seriously? Like, do we really have to go through these lines? Basically, why is he writing these lines? I mean, I personally think that, and I've thought about this many times, like why this kind of, like these lines, like so much detail and a little symptom here, and then you change the formula. I think he's using this opportunity to teach us permutations of formulas as symptoms change in clinic. And I wouldn't be surprised that this was a real-life scenario at one point in time. That this was truly something he saw his teacher do, or something that happened to him himself, where he gave a you know, patient came in with leaning for you know difficult breathing, and they had couldn't lay down. And he gave him shachin tang, and then it caused all this surging, and he had to figure out how to fix that. And he fixed the surging, and the cough came back, and he, he gave those herbs. And, that was fine and all, but then, then, you know, the damp in the center was still there and I had to figure out, and there's some vomiting, I had to figure out how to fix that. I think it wouldn't be, it's probably stylized and probably more mistakes were made, you know, but he, I think he kind of uses this to teach us, you know. This is the question I kind of whispered yesterday with the up flare of the shower, ching wong tong with the patient who got the... Right. Uh, 
I did a childhood greater ganjang, I think, something like that, yeah. Um, do you remember, Eti, the, the patient with the lips peeling? Yes, I was just looking at the description. Because we didn't have the shower chain while I was doing that. I've done that with a foot soap for the last yeah. day, you know, and they thought the same exact thing. I caught a cold, my lips peeled. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think, I think. I mean, I, like I said <laughs> yesterday, I joked. Yes, I said, I don't know who I said this to, but I said, don't, like, because you know, in the in our teaching clinic, patients bring like the practitioners bring in their patients for me to see, and then I said, don't ask in front of your patient what I think of your formula. <laughs> I said, because if you catch me in a good mood, it's fine, but if you catch me in a bad mood, it's embarrassing. And so, um, not that I have bad moods, really, but, uh, but, you know, basically, I think, you know, while we're on this topic, I think that this patient already was, already had half a foot in Shaoyang at the time that she received the Sha Qinglong. I'm not saying that it wasn't the Sha Qinglong at the beginning. I don't know. But I've definitely seen it when people are like half foot in Shaoyang. Same thing. There's line 26 of the Shahalan, I think. Uh, well, that's another possibility. Yeah, that's, so it's difficult to know. But like, like line 26 uh, of the Shahalan, if, that, if I'm not mistaken, that's a Bahu Jaren Shantang line where it talks about after taking Gui Jitang, there is. Uh, lots of sweating, lots of thirst. You know, does that mean that Gui Jitang was wrong? No, because the lots of sweating, lots of thirst, that's pure Yang Ming. So obviously, that person, you know, if that person was in a Bai Hu Tang, who on earth is going to give a Gui Jitang? That would just then he would have said, if a person was in Bai Hu Tang and was given Gui Jitang, blah 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 blah, that he would have described that completely differently. It just meant that this person, yeah, you know, was in Taiyang, but was really on the cusp of moving into Yang Ming. Right, but was at that time of on the cusp of moving into Yang Ming was still given a Taiyang formula, right? Same thing with the Gugen Qin Lian Tang. It's the same thing, right? Patient was given Gui Zhi Tang and then develops this Gugen Qin Lian Tang pattern, right? It's the same thing. It's like doesn't mean it was wrong, but because it's a very mobile, dynamic uh, disease progression, you don't know where in their twenty four hours they're at, right? Unless you have that pulse, and then you really clearly know. Oh yeah, like uh, I took your pulse this morning and I felt like I can totally feel how maybe yesterday or so, I don't know when you first started feeling a little feverish, that it would have been like a Guggen tongue. And at that stage, you could have like, poof, it gone, right? But now I can still see how that is a little bit in there, but I already feel that gallbladder pulse coming up. I'm like, ah, it's, our, you know, it's too late for Guggen tongue. We have to just go straight to uh, a Chai Hu Gui Zetang modification. So Chai Hu Gui Zetang plus Guggen. Because it moves, right? So same thing. If you catch, catch it with the wrong formula, just as it is about to move, boom, this could happen. So it could be that the person was coughing, and originally it was all Shao Qinlong tongue, but now it could be that it actually was more a Shao Chai Hu Tang minus Ren Shen Da Zao plus Gan Zhan Wu Wei Zi. Right? Or something like that. But then you give them the Shao Qin Long Tang. And what's going to happen? What does Dan Dong Jing say? Don't die for ease a Shaoyang pattern. Right? Because Shaoyang pattern is flaring of ministerial fire. Diaphoresis of Taiyang means that I'm going to fan some wind to create some flames to, to create the fire. Right? It's like my morning is too cold. I need to warm it up. But, Shao, but Shaoyang pattern is the opposite. The morning is already too hot. So if you're going to warm it up even more, you're going to create upward surging of fire. And then upward surging of fire, dry throat, dry nose, dry eyes. In this case, dry lips, peeling of the lips. Those are all possible. Same thing with like a, uh, if they have a, min a ministerial fire that is uh, stuck. And because it's stuck, it flares, right? Because it, it wants to go down, it can't, it's stuck. And because of that, it reverts back up. And then you're feeding into the imperial fire, which is, of course, the mother of the ministerial fire it creates more flair, right? And that's why I always hammer on the fact of um, harmonize before you use... Uh, harmonize, if you're going to start somebody on a Fuzu formula, make sure that, one, there is no Yang Ming dry stomach, but that's an easy one to catch. That's not one that we make mistakes on very easily. But two, make sure there's no ministerial fire blockage. So that when I actually increase the amount of fire in circulation, that it actually has place to roam.
as opposed to if it's stuck and then all of a sudden you get a bunch of heat symptoms. Right? A lot of people, oh, I, did, I took this, I took food. And this is the problem in TCM, and I will say this over and over and over again. So many people will say, oh, I've given food to a patient once, and oh, I gave them three grams. And you know what, they had all these heat symptoms and tingling and blah, blah, blah. Well, aside from the fact that sometimes it's just, I mean, a lot of foods on the market is bad quality foods. 95% is just poor quality. It's uh, sourced from cheap sources, and they've cut corners during processing because, again, they want to save money. And that is a fact. And even in China, that's a well-known fact. right? So with an herb like foods, that's not something you want to mess with. That's, that's the last herb you want to save money on. Because that's the one that's going to kill your patient if you're not careful. right? You want to save money on rentgen? Honestly, I, I couldn't care less. Right? Oh, this is a slightly inferior quality of rentgen. It's like, you know, Duan and I, we were in, in, we were in China uh, last week, and we want to buy a, a jade bracelet. And I kid you not, one jade bracelet here costs 200 or $300, and the next one next to it is $20,000. And I'm like, what the fuck? I can't tell the difference. I cannot, for the life of me, see the difference. Same thing with rentgen. Who cares? I'll wear the cheap one. I'll use the cheap rentgen. I don't care. That's not going to kill me. It looks good, rinchen, it tastes okay, whatever. You know what I mean? That's, that's not an herb that is, that's not going to change things drastically, right? But if I'm going to spend uh, uh, $200 on a car versus $20,000 on a car, that's when it makes a difference, right? Whether that airbag's going to deploy or not when I need it, that's when it makes a difference. And that's where I know my money was well spent or not. And that's the same thing with the foods versus the rentgen or something like that, right? You're not going to hurt a person with a slightly inferior quality rentgen, right? My teacher uh, mostly treated people with less means, and, and he always used dangshen, you know? And it was fine. It was fine. I know, like, yes, it's not as good as fluid replenishing, but, but it, it's fine, right? But when it comes to foods, and especially those are patients with severe immune problems or life-threatening illnesses, you don't want to cut corners, right? And that's, of course, the thing. So aside from the quality, there's uh, the reason why people get side effects is not because food is a dangerous herb, is because they're not skilled enough at using it, especially not skilled enough in detecting what is the homework you need to do, what is the preparatory stuff you need to do before the person's body is optimized to receive the treatment of aconite. And that is very important, right? And, of course, primary one is, of course, that you don't have uh, a Yang Ming disease, no dry heat. Secondary one is that you don't have a Shaoyang disease, no damp heat. Right? Those are the two main things you have to be careful of. When a person who has a Drayin disease and you give them food, so what's going to happen? Nothing. They're not going to have any type of discomfort. When a person has Taiyin disease, it's not the right treatment, but it's not going to cause discomfort. When a person has Taiyin disease and you give them food, so what's going to happen? Nothing. Nothing. I mean, there's something that's going to happen, but it's going to be basically unnoticeable to the patient because it's all yin, right? So that's not going to be a problem either, right? When they have Taiyang disease and you give them food zun, it depends. It depends. So it could be good in some cases, right? And Fire Spirit School, definitely they do a lot of that because they often try to use food, right? Because the Zongqi of Taiyang is Shao Yin. So by working on Shao Yin, you're kind of benefiting the warmth in, in Taiyang. So, okay, maybe that would be okay. But with Yang Ming and Shao Yang, okay, that's <laughs> not a good idea. Uh, a dry grassland and you're throwing like a spark in it. <laughs> I mean, it's not just a spark. You know, if you write a lot of foods, it, it's like you just were testing your flamethrower in the field, right? And of course, the whole thing is going to catch fire. So dry stomach heat. Uh, what does foods do? Foods tries to push fluids out. What if the environment has no fluids? What is it going to push? Blood. Right? So when people say, I took foods and I had a bloody nose. I took foods and I had blood in my stool. I took foods and I had, like, I don't know, spitting up of blood. Right? It's because they had a Yang Ming scenario. Yang Ming dryness. Fuzi pushes water because Fuzi cannot tolerate water in its vicinity. Right? It's like, ah, get this water away from me. Right? Vodka only. And so Fuzi tries to push it away. But if there's no water to push, it's going to push at the blood. Right? So that's Yang Ming. Definitely no, no. Definitely do not use foods in that situation. And then Shaoyang, either damp heat, which means the ministerial fire can't travel because it's trapped in the water, right? Or uh, uh, um, um, 
uh, ministerial fire flaring as in Shaoyang patterns where the ministerial fire tries to descend but it can't descend so it reverts back up and surges. Right? You add more fire in the body that's just more fire to surge with. It's not going to unblock it. However, the fire spirit school does unblock ministerial fire blockages with high foods. But it is extremely uncomfortable for the patient. Right? Uh, I talked to Lodi Hong once and we talked about that. And he basically says, we don't care. Um, sometimes when the chimney is blocked, you just got to burn it through, burn through it. You know, like one way of unblocking a chimney is to create a fire in the chimney. You, you better have 911 on speed dial, okay? Because <laughs> that's quite risky. And I don't think your neighbor is going to like that. You know what I mean? Like, especially not if you're, if you're living in a, a attached row house or something. Right? They're going to be like, dude, don't, dude, don't do that. Don't, you know. It's like, oh, I'm just like uh, cleaning my barbecue and I'm just like testing it in my garage. You're like, no, you, you want to do that outside. You don't want to do it in the garage. It's kind of the same thing, right? Because the, the fire can't go anywhere. So that would not be a good idea. So you always harmonize before you use herbs that are going to stoke the fire, right? And that's, that's very, very big. Even, even when like, some of the patients who came in in clinic like yesterday, some of them, I already know that at one point I'll need to put them on a zenwu or something like that, right? And sometimes, if they were my patients, some of them, the pulse is so weak, you're like, yeah, they might be really ready for something warming, right? Liver treatment or, uh, you know, with dengue or, you know, food treatment or whatever. But because I don't know these patients and because I'm not going to be here for the next seven weeks, so I want to play it safe because... You know, otherwise I give the formula too prematurely, it flares up. If it were in my clinic, you flare up, I'm like, okay, well, that has diagnostic value because, you know, that's just a few days and then I give you a different formula and that's fine, right? But I'm not going to be here for seven weeks. It's not going to work. So I have to harmonize first. Level the playing field. Prep the body. And then I go in with food. Beautiful. Without discomfort for the patient. Right? That's very important. So anytime that you've taken food to yourself or you've given it to your patients, Whenever they've had some type of flare-up of something, for example, they used to have eczema, and all of a sudden it flares up. They go on a Fuzzi formula and their eczema flares up. Right? Or they go on a Fuzzi formula and they get itching. Or they go on a Fuzzi formula and their athlete's foot flares up. Or they go on a Fuzzi formula and they get a headache. Or they go on a Fuzzi formula and they get a sore throat. I mean, all of those symptoms are just a sign, not that this was the wrong time for, 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 for them, not that, not that it was the wrong formula, maybe they do need that formula, but somehow, somewhere in the body, there are, is some obstructions in the ministerial fire circulation. So you open it up with a ministerial fire unblocking formula. And then you give them the formula, the food formula, beautiful. Right? I might have shared this case of this child uh, that one of, the colleagues of, uh, one of your colleagues in Germany for the German group was treating... Uh, uh, a, a juvenile rheumatoid arthritis case uh, with greater shaya right? Greater shaya drumutan, and beautiful results. The, the child was doing really well, good results, and all of a sudden the formula stops working. All of a sudden the formula stopped working. She's like, oh, I don't know what happened. The formula stopped working. So I know now from experience, you know, working with these formulas, when the formula stops working, and it stopped working all of a sudden, anything that is sudden belongs to wind. Which means an acute flare-up of most likely an external invasion. An external invasion all of a sudden changed the priorities in your body, in the patient's body, and this formula no longer works because this body is no longer ready for this formula. It needs a different treatment. All right? That's a fact. Now the thing is, normally you would catch that. Why? If a person gets an external wind cold invasion, what do they develop normally if they're healthy? A fever, but this case is, and this is common, r r autoimmune disease. They don't, they don't, they don't spike fevers. They don't fight. The body doesn't fight <coughs> against the external invasion. It, it fights in weird ways itself and all, but not properly. So you do. You normally you would catch it like all of a sudden they like chills and fever. You're like, okay, they have an external invasion. Obviously, this is not the right formula. But these patients, they don't develop that. They don't fight from Taiyang. They don't fight from Yang Ming. Where do they fight from? From Shaoyang little sore throat, but the kid might not say that, or sometimes your patients might not even be aware of that, right? A little bit of ear stuffiness in the ear, a little bit of, you know, sore throat, a little bit of headache. They might not pay attention to that. So you don't know. So what did she do? More food. 
right? More food. Didn't, didn't help. Formula still didn't work. Patient was uncomfortable. Then she's like, oh, uh, I'm going to add Wuto to the formula. <laughs> she's going all fire spirit, like sweeping the chimney. Um, of course, it didn't work. You know, formula stopped working. Uh, patient had no results, was uncomfortable. Uh, so then she asked me, like, what should I do? And I, I didn't even see the patient. I said, Chai Kanjantan. Harmonize Shao Yang. And, and Chai Hukwezi Kanjantan especially is triple Yang. So you're harmonizing not only Shao Yang, you're also treating Tai Yang and Yang Ming. Right? Chai Hukwezi Kanjantan, at least for three weeks, if you're doing granules, at least for three weeks. Right? It doesn't harmonize faster than that. Right? Harmonize, 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 and then go back to just the original Greater Shao Jumutang that was working without the crazy modification. And then that's what she did. And then everything worked perfectly again. Right? So over and over I have seen that. Right? So I would almost be able to say that almost automatically when an original formula used to be working and now all of a sudden stopped working, I would almost say 7 out of 10 cases it will be a child grade It is so common to see that. Are you talking about any formula? No, no, any formula at that point. But with the foods formulas, it's most common that you would see that. But yeah, but any form. Yeah. I guess I have a question. What would be possibly a strategy moving from like the Yao to the Shishin Tang? The Shishin Tangs are actually also Shaoyang formulas. Why? Because they have Huang Qin in them. Right? Exactly. That's brilliant. I actually was just going to say that because I mentioned some people get a little eczema flare up or itchiness of the toes or whatever because of the food. It's the same thing. It still is ministerial fire stuck that is not descending. But now it's stuck in more of a damp earth. But it's still actually a Shaoyang. It's a Shaoyang Yang Ming combined pattern. But it is nevertheless a Shaoyang pattern. So uh, actually, this year, I must say, like. Um, Since when? I'm trying to remember since when. I'm actually thinking maybe since like November, December of last year even. Like maybe December. Um, instead of the typical giving the Chai Hu formulas to unblock the ministerial fire, for some reason this last season I've seen a lot more need for Sheshin Tangs. Bancha, Sheshin or whatever to unblock the path, pathway through which ministerial fire has to circulate. Yeah. I'm just curious if they're going to flare patients this week. Was that? I'm just curious if they're going to flare someone this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so sometimes that you use that kind of formulas to unblock the circulation of the Ministry of Fire before you put them on a... Right. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, so prep the patient's uh, playing field and then the formula goes down pretty easily. So it's kind of interesting how Zhang Dongjin kind of goes through these motions here. He did something that provoked a reaction. He fixed it. So I think he's trying to teach us something and it might very well be based on some of his own experiences with these formulas, with these herbs and then he kind of stylized it into a didactic step-by-step uh, -step thing. So he says, you add the bansha. So when you add the bansha, that is what we call lingam wu wei zhang xin sha tang, right? You had to add the bansha into the formula, right? And then after the water is expelled, the vomiting stops. Perfect. Yeah, the bansha did the trick. But now the person appears swollen, right? They have some superficial edema. Their face looks a bit swollen. Their arms and legs uh, look a bit puffy. The, the hands and feet may be a bit puffy, right? He says... This is governed by the addition of Shingren. You should add Shingren. Is Shingren the primary herb for superficial swelling? No. Ma Huang is. Right? But he says, this pattern one normally should ma add Ma Huang. But because this person has consequent obstruction, it is not added. Right? What it means is that this person basically does not have the proper yang uh, to be able to take the Ma Huang. Right? The consequent obstruction is a little bit uh, of a difficult thing to, to understand. He says, if one goes against this and adds it, there Im imperatively will be counterflow. Why? How does he know that? Because that's what he did in the first place. He gave Shao Qilong Tang and caused counterflow. So it must be that this patient's yang is weak. Why? He says, the person is blood deficient and Ma Huang effuses the yang. So if the person is blood deficient, blood deficient, yang deficient is the same thing. Remember, because blood is liquid yang. It just means that your blood is not abundant enough to anchor the yang, to hold on to the yang. So the temperature of the blood flows away from the actual blood. Right? You ha you're always ha floating yang basically means that your blood, which is liquid, should contain the warmth, doesn't, shouldn't just let it 
out just for no reason, right? You should kind of store it on the inside, right? The liquid should wrap itself around the heat, right? Now, the liquid is too weak to wrap itself around the heat, so the heat leaves the liquid, right? So if you, if you have a blood deficient situation and the heat has a, your body heat has a tendency to leave your liquid layer, right? Which means the, 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 the warmth is going through the fluid layer into the air layer, which means that the fluid layer is too porous to keep the temperature of the blood in the blood layer, and, it, and that temperature therefore floats into the air layer, right? Then you should be very careful with uh, ma huang because ma huang is going to yank that temperature out of the blood into the air layer, right? So you've got to be very careful with that. He says, Ma Huang effuses the yang. So he, and here, very beautifully, he shows us that a substitute for Ma Huang is Xing Ren. Right? That's beautiful. Ma Huang. He says, Donald Ding also, like, wh- where else do we see that? In Shao Qing Long Tang. In Shao Qing Long Tang postscript, modification postscript, he says, if there is panting, take Ma Huang out and add Xing Ren. And then the commentators say, that's wrong because Ma Huang treats panting. You idiot! You idiot. I mean, this is historical commentators. Guys that 400 years ago deserved an ass whooping. Right? Because basically, what is he saying? It is not a ma huang tang. It's a xiao qin long tang, which means this patient is not ma huang tang, which means that the patient is already weaker. Why? Because there's bai shao in the formula. Why is there bai shao in the formula? I know bai shao doesn't do anything to to uh, your young, exactly. Bai Shao astringes your nutritive, but why else would you have to astringe nutritive? Because you've been sweating. And if you've been sweating, you've been losing young. And if you've been losing young, your young is a bit too weak. So don't use Ma Huang in a person whose young is already too weak. So the panting in a Xiao Qin Tang patient is Xing Ren panting, not Ma Huang panting. So that's why Ma Huang out, Xing Ren in. Right? It's very much... That line informs this line, but I learned from this line to understand that line, <laughs> right? So this is very important, right? So Zhang Longjing is a master of precision, master of precision. He doesn't just say, oh, I'm just going to add some Xing Nun to my, to my Xiao Qing Long Tang. No, that would open your pores even more. In Ma Huang Tang, it's Ma Huang and Xing Nun together that open your pores, not Ma Huang by itself. It's, you know... Really interesting. And when, of course, there is a, a, a lot of openness. The Xiao Qin Long Tang, it's more open than Ma Huang Tang, right? So, you know, you still use a little bit of Ma Huang, but with greater Bai Shao combo. If there's a full openness, so you no longer need Ma Huang, and there's panting, then it's what that you add to greater Tang? Ho Po and Xing Ren, right? To, again, open but pull down also, right? Not just open outward, but open and descend the air. Ho Po Xing Ren combo, greater Jia Ho Po Xing Ren Tang. Right? Ma Huang Tang, Xiao Qin Long Tang minus Ma Huang plus Xing Ren, right? And then Gui Zhi Jia Ho plus Xing Tang. Right? So those are the three main ways in Taiyang to treat panting, right? Pure Taiyang to treat panting. Any type of other panting is going to be Ma Huang Shi Gao combo, right? Ma Xing Shi Gan Tang, Da Qing Long Tang, then of course it changes again. And then if, hot, if the face is hot as if drunk, remember, it's hot as if drunk. After giving Lingam Wu Wei Jiang Xin Ban Sha Xing Ren Tang, right? After giving a formula that uses fooling to get fluids down and out, uses Gan Zhang and Xi Xin to dry out the earth and uh, transform damp, right? Uses Ban Sha to transform damp. So basically, if the face is going to be red and hot again, now it's not going to be because of the surging, because the surging, surging was already fine. It's going to now be because you've heated up the stomach too much. So that's the stomach heat. He says, surging upwards to steam the face. So then you have to add Da Huang, right? Lin Gan Wu Wei, Jiang Xin, Sha Xin, Da Huang Tang. Right? So then you add Da Huang to that formula. Whether he actually ever had to go through all these motions, it's hard to know. I think because of clinical, uh, real clinical events inspired him to kind of stylize these lines into kind of a the didactic step-by-step instruction on changing formulas, and, 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 and really like a wealth of information in just these few sentences. I, I love this pa- passage. I mean, if only he had given more <coughs> lines like that, like all these different permutations and changes. But he's got a few, right? Like, for example, the Bai Tong Tang, uh, if there's abdominal pain, add Bai Shao. If there's a sore throat, Bai Shao out, Jie Gang in. You know, like he's got like slight permutations left and right uh, that he teaches us. But 
I, you, I cannot get enough of this stuff. This is really good stuff. Cool. Let's take a little break.